Hi friends, this is Dr. Dangerous Medicine Made Halwa. Uh, thank you to Times again today because of their sponsorship. I have the color pens and a nice board. Uh, I'm sorry for the last video, which was my first video, it should have been a perfect one, but that was just a test video. And I didn't knew that in just uh, three, four days, I will get uh, like around about 200 plus views. So, uh, you know, last time I just left you with left sided heart failure. Now I decided to make a video on right sided heart failure. So today we were going to be discussing the right uh, heart failure. And guys, you know, uh, when we start the right sided uh, heart failure, we should note uh, that what are the causes which are causing right side heart failure. So one of the most common causes is left side heart failure, right? In the last video, I discussed that what is left sided heart failure? Kya hai? तो मैं आपको बता दूं कि राइट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर का सबसे मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज जो है लेफ्ट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर लेफ्ट साइड ही आपका जब फेल हो रहा है तो उसकी वजह से फिर आपका राइट right साइड भी फेल होता है ओके राइट सो वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज और ये समटाइम्स एमसीक्यू क्वेश्चंस आ जाता है एनबी पूछ लेती है एफएमजी ईके एग्जाम में भी और साथ ही साथ पीजी के एग्जाम में भी देन द नेक्स्ट रीजन इज लेफ्ट टू राइट कार्डियक शंट and then the third reason is chronic lung disease, right? तो सबसे पहले हम लोग most common left side heart failure है, तो वो हम already discuss कर ही चुके हैं, लेकिन फिर भी I will try to explain that. See, what happens is when the left sided heart fail uh, fails, what happens is that the blood is not properly pumped to the body from the aorta. The blood is not going properly out, right? Then what happens is blood starts to get accumulate in the right side and it starts to build up. The pressure in the pulmonary artery. So when the pressure builds up in the pulmonary artery, it is harder for the right side of the heart to pump the blood, and that causes biventricular heart failure. Right, guys? You can imagine the left side is already failed, right? And because of that, the pressure in the pulmonary artery is building up, and that is also failing the right side. Hence, we can also call it as biventricular heart failure. Now, coming on to the next point, which is the left. To right cardiac shunts. Now, what happens is the shunts are mostly maximum and always they are from the left side to the right side. What are those shunts? They can be when the blood is moving from the left side to the right side. Why the blood is always moving from the left side to the right side? Because on the left side the pressures are higher. That's why the blood is always moving from the left side to the right side. And because of that, in uh, lots of defects such as atrial septal defect or uh, ventricular septal defect, the blood will move from the left side to the right side always remember like this i have made the arrows for your easy understanding now what happens is when this shunt is present when this defect is present either in the atrias or in the ventricles what happens is that the fluid or the blood comes from the left side to the right side in more quantities and when the fluid increases what happens is there is a concentric hypertrophy right and because of the concentric hypertrophy is there can be an ischemia right when your muscle mass will be thickened there will be ischemia and that would lead to the difficulty in systole hence we will have a systolic failure now what happens is this concentric hypertrophy does not only cause ischemia it can also lead when the size of the heart will increase it will also cause the difficulty in a proper diastole the volumes will be less and that can also cause a diastolic failure right so this can also be a reason for a right sided heart failure and now the third reason which i told you is that it will be the copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or chronic lung disease so what happens in chronic lung disease guys what happens is that when there is a chronic lung disease there is ex uh, there is decrease in the exchange of o2 oxygen that leads to what that leads to hypoxia right less amount of oxygen is going in the body that further causes the constriction of pulmonary arterioles or artery right and that leads to increase the blood pressure in the pulmonary region so pulmonary blood pressure will be pulmonary region blood pressure will be high that would again lead to the hypertrophy and the failure of the heart and that towards that towards uh, that or two of the right side right side and that will together call it as core pulmonale right and then this core pulmonale that together all core pulmonale leads to systemic venous congestion right now we need to understand that what is systemic venous congestion so now i'll explain you that what is systemic uh, congestion it is very interesting you know you need to understand this because if you will not understand this you will not understand those fancy terms which we generally use in our textbooks of internal medicine right 
And now you will understand everything guys. Just let me clear this board. Otherwise you will won't, won't be able to write anything, right? Okay guys, so systemic venous congestion. When I was talking about systemic venous congestion, what happens is the fluid, which is in large quantities, gets into the interstitial spaces of, especially our liver guys. I'm sorry for my bad drawing, right? And our spleen, right? Guys, the fluid starts to get accumulated into our liver and our spleen, right? Liver and spleen. So when the fluid is getting accumulated into the interstitial spaces, spaces of these, uh, what you call uh, organs, what happens is they tend to get swollen, right? Their size becomes bigger and that is what is known as hepato spleno megaly right and it is painful and it is painful and still when this accumulation of the fluid is not stopped and the fluid continues to get accumulated it leads to the dysfunction of the organs of uh, the, uh, leads to the dysfunction of these organs and further we have the cirrhosis right cirrhosis development occurs when the cirrhosis occurs because of this right-sided heart failure we call it as cardiac cirrhosis very important term guys very fancy term cardiac cirrhosis you should understand that how this cardiac cirrhosis develops and cardiac cirrhosis is nothing but it is just the accumulation it is the cirrhosis because of the accumulation in the interstitial spaces of liver right uh, always remember this hepatospinomegaly is painful in right sided heart failure now what happens is the fluid is not only accumulated in liver and spleen the fluid is also accumulated guys in our big peritoneal cavity right and because the peritoneal cavity ha is big is big right so the fluid continues continues to build up pressure in peritoneal cavity and because it is big we do not realize until unless it is fully fully filled with the fluid now after this what happens after this guys the fluid starts to accumulate the fluid fluid starts to accumulate in our lower limbs right the fluid starts to accumulate in our lower limbs and sacral region sacral region right guys so what happens is fluid starts to accumulate after the peritoneal cavity because of the gravity right because gravity pulls everything down right so the fluid is also not an exception to that so fluid is also going into our lower limb and it is getting accumulated in the sacral region when you are lying when you are lying the fluid is getting accumulated in your sacral region but when you are standing because of the gravity the fluid goes into your lower limbs right and when you pit into that when you pit into that what happens is when you pit into that we have a pit which is left in your leg when you put a finger into it the pit is made and it becomes normal after a bit of time so pit is there that's why we're calling it as pitting edema pitting edema because what happens is for example this is a leg right and if you put a finger so a pit will be made there and this pit will get normal in a span of time right so this is pitting edema guys right so this is about the fluid accumulation in left-sided heart failure what was happening in the left-sided heart failure the fluid was getting accumulated in the lungs but in the right side heart failure the fluid is getting accumulated in your systemic venous circulation and then into the different organs then into your legs then into your sacral region so always remember when you are lying there will be edema in your sacral region when you are standing because of the gravity in the lower limbs you will have a pitting edema now after that guys we will talk about the we will talk about the treatment we'll talk about the treatment now so i will clean the board again and we'll talk about the so we have left sided or right sided heart failure ka halwa khali hai 
अब हमको हलवा खाना है इसका किसका ट्रीटमेंट का राइट तो हमें ट्रीटमेंट अंडरस्टैंड करना है दैट व्हाट इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ राइट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर राइट गाइस सो इसका जो ट्रीटमेंट है द ट्रीटमेंट इज सेम एज लेफ्ट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर जैसे मैंने आपको प्रीवियस वीडियो में बताया था सेम एज लेफ्ट साइडेड हार्ट फेलियर गाइस राइट बट Now what happens is there are two type of things, right? When the right side of the heart is failing or the left side of the heart is failing, either it is failing because of stretching, stretching of muscles, and thinning, right? Or they are becoming thick or ischemic, right? In both the cases, guys. In both the cases. your heart your heart myocardial cells your heart myocardial cells they are getting irritated right they are getting irritated guys and that is causing what arrhythmias right different types of arrhythmias in both kind of heart failure is right? either a left side heart failure or right uh, or a left side heart failure so this arrhythmias also needs to be treated and that's why they are the part of treatment of the heart failure so these arrhythmias are either treated by the cardiac resynchronization therapy or they are treated by the ventricular assisted devices okay so cardiac resynchronization therapy or ventricular assisted devices so what ventricular assisted devices they do is basically they are a transplantation of your left side of the ventricle you can say there is a device you put on the uh, near the left side of your uh, left ventricle and this helps us to pump the blood from the left side of the heart properly particularly the ventricle okay guys and after that if still the patient is not responding to any kind of treatment the last resort the last resort is we all know cardiac trans as plantation right so the last resort is cardiac transplantation with this i finish both kind of heart failures right side and the uh, left side and in this i have also dis uh, discussed with you the diastolic type of heart failure the systolic type of uh, heart failure the treatments and i just request you to subscribe my channel like my videos and support me so that i can make uh, more easy videos for my medical friends and i can help them if i can and with that i would like to thank you all thank you so much